having to accept annihilation or being forever mistreated. I'm just here, I'm choking. Like, I can't take it. Whew. Happy birthday. I'm buying myself titties for my birthday. Hey girls, welcome back to my channel. You all, grab something. We're gonna drink and we're gonna talk because to understand the context of today's video, I would recommend you watch the previous one. You can watch this one, then go watch it, or pause this one, then watch it. Let's talk about it. So I was speaking about the heartbreak I was going through, which the girls that got it, got it, but I guess I just want to explain something a little bit more because there was just so much going on in my mind, or in my head. When I was filming that video, I was under so much stress. And also I was very careful uh, with the, with my words on thoughtful with what I was saying that probably I mixed some of you guys in the sauce so let's get into it a heartbreak is a metaphor for intense emotional distress that somebody goes through usually it's in relation to um, unreciprocated love or lost of love that's according to the googler I'm, I'm not saying for I'm paraphrasing it with a heartbreak, one can succumb to depression, anxiety, or in extreme cases, PTSD. I said heartbreak for a reason. A lot of people don't like talking about the toxicity that exists um, with relatives, or yeah, mostly relatives. We don't like talking about it because there's a lot of, um, it's like an abomination, like unspoken taboo that you, just, you shouldn't just talk about it. Um, and there's a lot of shame of course talking about it and that's maybe something that is something that I was trying to overcome because shame has a way of really putting you down shame is a very low vibration feeling and when you have it like you'd rather be ha angry like upset than feel shame because when you feel shame you're just down there and I felt like part of overcoming my shame with what I was going through or the shame that I was being put through was to talk about it just to help lift me up um, of course I'm getting help with my therapist and I'm doing my best to give myself the best help I put I could possibly get um, but I feel like talking about it even uh, with, in a creative way help me or is helping me process a shame that I have lived with for quite some time or something that I feel like it's constantly thrown at me to shame me or to make something really personal and painful um, that happened to me that to be honest at the time that it happened I was young, I, I really did not like process it or deal with it. Um, something that happened that I still, to be honest, I still haven't really processed well or whatever. And every time it's thrown at me, it really, really gets me and puts me like, I can't, I just can't. I'm still man trying to manage what I'm going through. Um, I remember telling you guys that when I came to Sweden, I went through depression and I was um, getting treatment. And at the time, uh, I was diagnosed with PTSD. That was the first time I got diagnosed with PTSD. And a lot of it had so much to do with the things that this person oh, has been trying to throw on my face and trigger me with yeah there is a lot of historical context to things and also there is a lot of generational trauma and stuff that plays into this stuff but honestly when you are on the receiving end of it there is just so much and you can only understand people to an extent and i think i have tried i have really really tried to understand people to an extent and since i'm somebody that honestly i really fear conflicts I don't like arguing people and if it happens that I really really have to I'd rather like take myself out of the situation never talk to people and I've done that with some people but apparently when it comes to um, relatives and so on you cannot choose and choose um, your relative it is how it is you've just gotta deal with it it's like a virus that you just gotta find coping mechanisms around it there is no treatment 
and that's part of the reason why it becomes very heartbreaking I constantly feel like I have to like tiptoe I'm constantly walking on eggshells which is just extremely frustrating if you've dealt with this or you haven't dealt with it let me just try to explain to you in what form it comes first of all there's this extreme high expectation on other people's kids but their own like their own can be whatever they want to be and that's fine but somehow other people's kids can just not be normal kids and i say kids in this situation because there is massive age i am a kid to these people another one is straight up abuse <laughs> and by abuse i just mean no shame insults verbal insults unwarranted verbal insults for me this has been both like in person but also publicly and by publicly i mean literally on my wall someone can just go and write whatever they want to write uh, that is so personal and so painful that no one should be reading unless I want to tell them by myself unless they know me in person just put out there for whoever wants to read public shaming um, or public abuse and public shaming and I just remember there's a time someone literally was like hey listen so you gotta stop this is extreme because it was just placed out there for everyone to see then there is mistreatment and <laughs> do I even have to get into the details of being mistreated I don't want to get into that it really messes up my mind it's like the people that mistreated you the most be the people that like be expecting the most from you and I'm like how are you just gonna forget the time when you did this to me no apologies no i'm sorry nothing you're just gonna forget that and somehow expect me to overcome it and be like this angel that just doesn't do wrong or and someone expect no i'm not an angel i'm not jesus i'm rachel okay i remember the mistreatment i remember all of that and i'm just trying my best to not live with it but i remember it judging with the slightest and i mean the smallest things will have all these judgeous people who having you on chokehold like you will not breathe from judgment like you're just supposed to be this literally walking breathing perfect delivering angelic human being and even when you're that it's still not enough we're going to talk about demeaning <laughs> in a joking way setting for you higher targets if you achieve this now you're supposed to achieve this or now how about this have you thought about this it's like dude <laughs> we have a global economic recession going on i don't know if you've watched the news but it's everywhere it's tough out here for everybody I just finished school I just started having my own career how am I supposed to have figured all these things while I was being a student trying to figure out my way in a new country like where do these expectations come from y'all where do they come from it's like the moment you've entered that airplane and gone abroad you're supposed to have achieved it all otherwise you are like this failure or better <laughs> stingy person that never gives even when you are personally just trying to build yourself up hook to this usually comes from ah, you remember that time when i took you to kindergarten it's always a little reminder of the time when you are vulnerable or the time when you're young or the time when they showed up for you and somehow for the rest of your life you're gonna be hooked to this and there's going to be extreme expectations the solution to this is not that simple because you can say cut them off uh, but it's not that simple because the fear of annihilation so for instance someone like me or even you or like just black people africans in general we have this feeling of community and society and togetherness and cutting certain people off can 
easily result into you being annihilated and some of these people know that and they use it as a tactic because probably they just do not like you that much and maybe they just they genuinely want you annihilated and frustrated alone so they can also turn these other people against you so that everybody can look at you like look at her she's she's the one who thinks she's special she's the one who thinks like this and that's why she's over here leave her there by herself so this is an annihilation tactic which some of these people just use for that purpose and that what that's what makes it so hard and i just do not want to be the person that annihilates herself from people because i love people do not get me started on societal norms and religious remixes Oof. those things go so deep you just don't wake up and approve it it doesn't work like that but respect your elders never talk back and are we going to talk about how people like this are so good at using the bible um using toxic biblical references to just support their toxic behaviors you know the thing is those of us who are christians i am a christian and i know how much people can easily weaponize the bible and use it or use some references in a very toxic manner that it's just even god is like no i did not I, I did not mean it like that but they know how to twist it and turn it and combine it and remix it in a way that just leaves you like okay well i'm not gonna live long if i if if i dare open my mouth most of these people they have just grown up like this this is just how they are there's nothing you can say or do that will change it at least for the long term it can change for a day or two but then it will all just come back it's much as i am trying to like have grace and understanding but also try to self-preserve i'm still really really struggling and even as we speak with everything that i've said I still don't have a solution I just wanted to put that out so you guys understand the context of what I was talking about having to accept annihilation or being forever mistreated by some people both of which are extremely painful and that's why when I say it's the most painful heartbreak I really mean it because that's exactly how it feels to me right now and it's gonna be at least until whenever I'm able to overcome this pain. Until then, my lovely girls, remember to subscribe and I will see you in my next vlog. Hopefully, feeling better. Did I do anything? <laughs> <laughs> Did I unknowingly break your heart? I knowingly broke my heart. Yeah. No, tell them to subscribe. Please subscribe. You will help Rachel a lot. Yeah, you will save me from captives. <laughs> <laughs>